I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome back to another week of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto. How are you doing, David? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing good. Getting ready for this week's topic. Our topic this week is adversity. And today's Motivational Monday, we will talk about overcoming adversity. Tuesday's Health Huddles, we are finally going to get back to our series on controlling cravings as we're going to bring you part four of that series with cravings and sleep. Wednesday's Meeting of the Minds, we will discuss the practice of focus. And this week's Connection Thursday will be spiritual adversity in finding faith. And finally, on Friday, we will continue the book study of Osho's book, Emotional Wellness. Before we get started, the dates are getting near. The event of Waken Connections, November 3rd and 4th in Orlando, Florida, is getting closer and tickets are selling like crazy. The event is set up for your 2019 and will be focused on all five life categories. So we got speakers coming in to specialize in each category. So in career, we have Mark Menard, the author of The Story of You, the host of Elevated Beyond podcast, and the founder of DreamShine. He's going to be talking on the danger of not doing your dream. In finance, we got great feedback last week on her episode is Cindy Brown, the author of the new book, Pragmatic Prosperity, and the host of the podcast, Unlocking the Secrets of Living Rich. In health, Billy Weiss is coming to town. He's the author of the 21st Century Pharmacist and the creator of a groundbreaking program called OptiRxU, right, David? Something like that. Yes, sir. Uh, Relationships. Monty Taylor, the author of The Power of Heart Language and a premier executive and business coach will be talking about all types of networking and relationships in the personal and spiritual development category. Another one that last week we got great feedback on is the newcomer to the personal development arena, Paul Baudry. But Paul is an international music star and he will be uh, selling, and we're hoping that he might surprise us and play a little bit. We're never sure. He is one that travels with that six-foot base. I don't know how he does it, but... Hey, just to clear it up, I, uh, I got Paul to uh, agree to give us a little treat. He will be playing. He is going to play. Gosh, how He'll do you travel playing, with guys. this thing? I mean, just... <laughs> That's, that's worth the ticket price alone. His new CD is called New Tomorrows, and he's created a new coaching program called Intentional Collaboration. He talked a little bit about that last week on how to create connection and communication. It's awesome. Special guest speaker, one of our stress mastery coaches, Jeff Deppie, will be talking on the difference between believing and knowing something and about its near-death experience. And I will be hosting the event with Super Millennial. And I'm going to speak on the new book, Connection, on connecting head, heart, and hand, and the steps to stress mastery. So that's coming up. Anything you want to add to that, David? No, guys, the, the tickets are selling. And remember that there's not a lot of tickets available. Um, we are selling out pretty quick we have a few vips left and the general admission is pretty much full between all the people we have um just go ahead and click the link below check out some of the information the website is awesome it explains all the questions and then if you have any further questions go ahead and email me david at living right with bill Corey. i'll answer any questions you have um it's going to be awesome guys the speakers the the environment everything about this event is like bill always says geared to start your 2019 right and no better way than doing it with you know experience from seven speakers who are willing to share their knowledge with you and what's the website the website is findingtheconnection.com the link is also right below for both the ticket sales and the website excellent 
All right, so this week we're back finally. No more interviews this week. We're going to actually get on topic again. And our topic is adversity. And today we're going to discuss overcoming adversity. Uh, I kind of got this topic from Linda. We were watching uh, NFL and they they had this interview with this young man who is very uh, good friends with Dak Prescott, the quarterback for the uh, Dallas Cowboys. And this young man was born without arms. And he does amazing painting with his feet. And he does everything with his feet. And, and it was amazing. And I asked Linda, what? She goes, you should do a topic this week on adversity. I thought, hmm, interesting. I've never done that. So that's what we're, so we're going to give her credit for the topic. And we're going to kick right into it. When we look at adversity, the definition of adversity is a condition marked by misfortune, calamity, or distress. Adversity simply is having difficulties. And I believe that adversity is the main reason that many people live a life of regret, quitting many times on their goals and quitting on themselves. To me, success in any of the life categories, and this is where people get confused, but they think adversity is just in business. No, it's all life categories, career, finance, health, relationships, Personal and spiritual development comes down to success in these areas comes down to the ability to handle adversity. And adversity to me is actually very, very important. This is because adversity, which is to have difficulties, is inevitable. I have never seen the perfect plan as of yet. Also, I believe it's in the midst of adversity that we grow personally. So what do you think of that? Super millennial, by the way, they can hear everything because we are um, on location. Everything you're doing on that side, they hear you. It's not like we're in the office, buddy. (laughs) I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing over there, but, you know, they can hear you just so you know. So don't do anything um, adverse, please. <laughs> what are your what are your thoughts? What are your th- thoughts on this? As far as uh, we just had an interesting conversation where where we were talking about how sometimes being too comfortable and not having any you know things to learn from, like like you said, the adversity can be a a curse. Even though some people thinking that comfort and having it easy must be nice, but like you said, you know, if you didn't go through what you did and sleeping in your car and learning the ways that you did you wouldn't be the person you are today. And I think that's like a, it's one of those tough pills to swallow where it's like, Hey, this is going to be hard, but it's going to make or break you. Uh, You see that all the time with a lot of these NFL players. When you look at the history and where they came from, it's like, Holy crap. Like this person's this superstar. Like they wouldn't be that without the, the struggles that they went through. And we take things for such granted, like we're like we were we were watching the show and the kid that was born with no arms, right? His whole life he's had to learn how to live without arms. That's adversity. Living in a world today, he brushes his teeth, he writes, he paints, he he works his phone, everything with his feet. And he's had to live that his whole life. So when we look at it, I do believe it's in this adversity where we truly grow personally. It is the challenge, the frustration, the disappointment that pushes us to grow, adjust, and be able to handle success. We always picture adversity overcoming these big obstacles, but that's just not true. So it's something little. Let's say you have a plan to get into shape, and your plan, you plan out this perfect diet for yourself, and you're going to eat certain foods at a certain time. Everybody does it, right, Dave? That's what they do for a diet. You get started, and the first couple of weeks, things go like clockwork. But then there's some schedule change at work or something happens, plus the kids may be out of school for vacation that week and have a long weekend. So this is when you have to face adversity. And it's the ability to prep your meals with the kids home the ability to maintain your meal schedule with the different schedule changes at work. And if you cannot adopt, you will fail and snap back to the old habits and patterns. See, that's adversity. People don't see these little things as adversity, but that's what adversity is. There's not a single significant achievement 
that has ever been done without overcoming something. And we have to realize that adversity is just challenges. That's all it is. But there isn't a single goal. I don't care what your goal is that you're setting. I don't care if you're, you're, if you're setting something in career, setting something in your money, setting something in your health, even relationships. Oh my, relationships all start out with the honeymoon period. And then the adversity will kick in. How are you going to handle the first time he leaves the toilet seat up? Oh my God. <laughs> no, not that. I'm just thinking about how much trouble I got in. But I had four daughters. And with, uh, at, at that time, there were five women in the house, me and Brett. We, we did not leave the toilet seat up. And, <laughs> but, but the adversity of relationships, adversity in your spiritual studies, adversity in any type of growth, adversity in school, adversity in all aspects of life, we have to realize this fact. Adversity is not bad. It is life. And life is your teacher. Life will strengthen you if you have the courage to live life. Life will also trap you and beat you down if you don't have the courage and you live life in a state of fear. And the first step in overcoming adversity is to stop looking at adversity as a problem. That's the first step, people. You've got to stop thinking that you got problems. Adversity is just a challenge. If you can get into the habit, one of the great habits that you can get into is every time you say you got a problem, switch it to the word challenge. Problems are stifling. Challenges are something that need to be overcome. They're the same thing. It's just, it may be just wordplay, but really it's energy play. Problems are in fear, they're down in grief, they're down in anger, they're down there. Challenges are in current, the courage, neutrality, and willingness. Wordplay may seem like it's just words, but it's not. Words are energy, and thoughts really drive your energy. So the first step in overcoming adversity is to stop looking at adversity as a problem. Adversity is just a challenge. Each adverse condition is placed before us to help us. In other words, the so-called problem that you have is there to actually help you. I love Joel Steen, David. He says, life is not happening to you. It is happening for you. And it's all a mindset. What are your thoughts on that? I think it was awesome. In the beginning, when I moved down to Miami, when I first went to work with you, you told, I was complaining that I had so many things to do between moving and this and that. And you said, stop, you don't have challenges, you have opportunities. And that to me stuck out so much when I, when I was thinking of like, oh, this is hard. This is this. I'm like, what opportunity is this for to grow? I was like, I know if it's hard, I'm learning something for, from it when I'm through it. And I always switch that. And wordplay is, like you said, it may sound like, you know, kid stuff. Like, oh, stop saying that. But for me, like, I look at things in a different light now in the sense of looking for what is my lesson from this because I will, you know, get through it. And what is it that I could teach the next person? Maybe I can avoid them going through it or them having to deal with the same problem. Not saying that they're going to avoid adversity completely, but they'll learn a different lesson to show someone else. I think that it's so important that people understand that because there, once you get, once you understand adversity, you can't fail. And what I mean by that is we handle adversity. When we handle adversity, you're going to have adversity in anything you try to do. If you don't, it's not happening. I'm just going to tell you right now, it's impossible. I've never seen anybody who set a plan from A to B without switching that plan a dozen plus more times. There's nobody, never have I seen it happen. And I don't care what the plan was for. Any type of goal has to have a plan. So when you follow, one of the clues that you can really use, especially from stress mastery, when you follow the higher goal setting that we teach in stress mastery coaching, you can see how this type of goal setting is set up to overcome and conquer adversity. 
So you see, goals are set in stress mastery with the steps of intention. So when we look at a goal, number one, you set the intention, the goal with purpose. What this does is this sets the head with clarity and the goals are set exactly to what you want to achieve. You're clear, this is my desire. And then in the steps of attention, step two, you acclimate to the energy of that intention being done, the goal accomplished. And what this does is this takes the clarity of the vision and the goal and creates a seed in the head. And you take that seed and you plant that seed in the heart and you now live in the energy of the goal attained. Now, this is so important, people. When you set your vision by imagining, which means you feel, see, walk, and talk as if you've already achieved the intention to desire the goal, this is a powerful energy. So when adversity comes, and you saw how I stated that, David, when, when. <laughs> adversity comes, as I know it will, you have the flexibility to change course and or deal what's in front of you. You've already walked in the energy of this accomplished. This in front of you is just something that's in front of you. And then number three in the steps of attention of higher goal setting is to allow the intention to manifest. You see, adversity is a difficulty that throws you off your plan, but you are in the stress mastery energy of volition when you use this tool that we teach. And volition, this means you exercise your will. You act as you need to act. The most important thing in using higher goal setting is, and the reason it works is you will not quit when you're in volition. There just isn't quitting. And so you have to understand that this is powerful. The first step in overcoming adversity is to stop looking at adversity as a problem. It's not a problem. We have no problems. And here's a truth, and I'll get more into this on Thursday, but here's a truth. How do you know? Because we don't know anything, right? We really don't know. How do you know? that the adversity that you are facing in that moment is not actually a divine intervention, right? Yeah, what opportunity, it's... How do you know? How do you, the worst things that could be happening could be the exact divine intervention. How do you know that dealing with a, problem, a problem, problematic situation now... <laughs> is not preventing something far worse that could happen in the future. How do you not know? I, you, you, you may think, oh, this is so terrible. Why is this happening to me? But how do you know? How do you don't know if that is most what's happened to you so you can achieve your desire? Maybe you're going in the wrong direction and life wanted you to take a right when you took a left turn. And the only way it can course correct you is to put a roadblock in front of you and force you to take the right turn. It's happened to me at least a dozen times in my career that I can go back and point to an exact situation that if I was to look at it with a problem mindset, I would have either quit or burned out from stress. And each one of those times, I looked at it as an opportunity. It's just the way I train my mind. I don't have problems. I have challenges. And by dealing with that challenge and switching my, my course of action, it's what led me to the success every single time. We just don't know, you know what could be worse. So how do you know that the so-called problem that has caused you to change your plan? It's not the course direction shift that was needed for you to accomplish your goal. We really don't know, you know? So overcoming adversity 
I'm going to say this, David. You ready? Here we go. Oh, boy. Overcoming adversity is easy. It, <laughs> oh, it just is. It's living the steps of stress mastery. It's living in the now. It's being in the present moment. It's about setting your day, setting your morning. It's about closing out your day. It's about setting your outer and inner environment into growth energies. Adversity is only a problem when you live in the story of the so-called problem. And if you follow the steps that we are teaching you here at Stress Mastery, if you are following the steps that we have been touting for the last couple years and you're really into it, you won't have problems because there is no such thing as a problem. The only way you have a problem is if the ego grabs that energy and turns it into a story and you keep reliving it over and over and over again. Now you got a problem. Otherwise, you just got something that got put in front of you and you need to deal with it. And so does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think a lot of people don't notice that there's a lot of times where I could have coasted in a lot of this new career opportunity that I have. And you've purposely made me go through adversity that I could have easily skipped if I rode your coattail. And, and people always ask, like, why are, you, why are you letting him do this? Why are you letting him figure it out? It's because I have to go through the learning passage. And I think it's the, like the, everything that you're saying now. If I go back and I look at all the stuff that I've accomplished now, I can go back and say I've made a lot of learning mistakes through it. And it was hard as hell for a lot of times. But I think if I didn't go through it and you weren't around, I'd fail miserably. I never would have got the lessons that I needed to be able to take these future challenges that are going to be bigger and greater. I think it's good to have these problems that you feel are problems that aren't really that. It's the same thing with stress. Is stress real? No, it's your mindset that you create for it. And I think if you let your ego see your challenges as problems, then that's exactly what it's going to be. You're just going to have problems and they're going to consume you. That's what happened. That's a good way to put it. They consume you, you know? So if we talk about, I'm going to take you guys through some steps of overcoming adversity, but I will tell you this, the most important thing I think is, is really to know yourself. You really got to know who you are. What is your purpose? Get clarity. Got to have connection of head, heart, and hand. Then the other stuff comes in to play. But if you don't have your base personal development down, and if you don't understand how frequency works, how your source is interacted, how the ego talks to you, how the programs activate, how the Green Focus Power Hour works, all these different things, it's very difficult to change. The Steps of Stress Mastery are there as a guidepost. That's all they are. But let's talk about overcoming adversity. So number one, I've already talked about it. The number one thing of overcoming adversity is to redefine adversity. And yes. make adversity a challenge, not a problem, and use the higher goal setting that we teach. It's very powerful because the way we set goals is to make sure when it's done right, you're not caught in that 125 desire energy. That is the strongest energy the ego has is not fear. Fear is the energy of the comfort zone in the cage. The strongest energy the ego has is desire, and that is the wants. And it's the wants that keep the ego intact and strong and when you set goals and properly you increase the want and when you do that you get stuck in the want and you go in circle in circle it's groundhog day over and over again so number one redefine adversity number two this is important set each day with priorities of actions and this is what i will tell each of you deal with the adversity situations first brian tracy Eat the frog. These are important. You, you want to deal with adversity situations first thing in the day. And it's important. This is so important. Accept the reality of the situation. It is what it is. <laughs> yes. You've got to accept it. This is what's in front of you. And you've got to deal with it 
first thing in a day. We did a show some weeks ago or months ago on willpower, and we talked about willpower is a thing that runs out. You have a lot more will, because will is an energy, and early in the day. As the day goes on and night comes, the will gets weaker. Do not put the hard stuff till later in the day. Deal with adversity first and get it out of the way. Trust me, it makes your day much easier. In fact, you feel fantastic when you do that. Yeah, so, trust the guy who wakes up at 2.30 in the morning. He yeah, has a little bit of experience about getting the hard stuff. I'm always gonna fire you first thing in the morning, so you know that, <laughs> you're avoiding me. Quit going out of town. I can't find you. Where's David? I don't know. So if I'm going to fire you, it's first thing in the morning, just so you know. I want to get that out of there. I'm going to keep that in mind. Okay. So, so every, everybody works for me. Just ask my daughter, Chelsea. She'll know. <laughs> so, number three. So we talked about first is redefine adversity. Number two, set each day with priorities of action. Number three, do not deal with a problem. With a problem energy. In other words, don't deal with problems from problem energy. Does that make <laughs> sense? And don't go down yes. those force energies and try to deal with it. It's so important to be working, living, and growing from the growth energies of the green zone. Don't try to deal with adversity from the red zone because in the force energy, all you're doing is increasing the adversity strength. You're increasing the problem. Deal with it from the green zone. Now, remember to be in the green zone, your diet's got to be right. You got to drink enough water and you got to exercise. If you don't have those first two steps of stress mastery down, you're not managing the nervous system. Diet and exercise manages the nervous system. And you, that's all the, the reason we have to eat is to manage the stress response. There's no other reason to eat. We're managing our communication of the hormones in our body and managing our nervous system. That's the purpose of your diet. But you also, another thing in this situation is remove yourself from a hostile situation. If something gets you upset and there's an adversity that's presented to you, you don't want to deal with it on the spot. You need to pause plan. So when adversity comes into your life and something happens, you may have to take action right away if there's like something that you have to shore up. Most times you can pause plan. My, what I do is I remove myself and reset my mind and energy. I do not want to deal with an adverse situation or adversity while I'm in that energy or while it's happening. Sometimes I have to. Sometimes I have to take things, you know, but most times I will try to remove myself. And the most important thing in, in that one in dealing with a, uh, the problem without dealing with problem energy is not to react. Don't be reactive. So that's, that's number three. Number three is do not deal with a problem from problematic energies. Number four, meditate. That's all I'm going to, there's nothing else to say. <laughs> I have nothing to say. I don't want to go into the science of it. I don't want to go into it because it is amazing what you can do when you meditate, especially when you have a lot of adversity. When people, the times that you feel you can't meditate is when you must meditate. Because when you feel you can't meditate, the ego is running the show. You are living in force energy and you're taking the adverse condition and you're making it a problem. Meditate. Number five, do not complain, blame, and repeatedly talk about the adverse issue. Adversity grows when you start bitching about it. This yes. is the ego streaming you a story, right? It grows like crazy. The more you talk about it, the bigger it gets. You got to deal with things, but you don't need to deal with it by talking to every single person in the workplace. You agree, yeah, David? it's a parasite. It needs to be fed. If you don't feed it, it dies. Literally that simple. <laughs> yes, and everybody wants to feed it. So that's number five. Don't complain. Number six, stay connected. So important. You want to stay connected to the head where you have the clarity of the goal. The heart, which is aligned to purpose, values, and imagination. And the hand is where the integrity of, of action by maintaining connection, it's simple. You will not fall into the force energies. That's what it does. 
This connection is important. So what is the important connection? The heart. Stay on purpose. Stay on your values. And stay calm. You don't have to deal with it from screaming and yelling. It just doesn't work. So that's number six. Number seven, when life hits you, do not fight it. Now, this is going to sound very contradictory to what everybody else is teaching. Yeah, I like everyone's people, ready for the hit back. Yes, kick ass, you know, kick their butt, knock them down, knock them away. It's crazy. I like to take adversity like a lot like Bruce Lee. I love Bruce Lee's teachings. You know, I follow a lot of his yes. teachings. He was a very spiritual man. And he used to talk about to be like water. And you see how water can flow around a rock, over a rock. Eventually, it can even cut through a rock. And, but the water never fights the rock. And the water keeps on flowing. It just keeps on moving. And, and so that's what you got to do. You got to be like water and let it flow. Whatever you fight becomes stronger. It's, it's good to get another perspective on the issue sometimes. Sometimes your, ish, your, your perspective is so tainted that you're stuck in the adversity energy. And sometimes you want to talk to somebody else. What you don't want to do is talk to somebody else who wants to fight the other thing too. You can't fight this, people. You can't fight life. When life hits you over, you've got to learn to flow with it. Because if you fight it, it becomes stronger. And remember the law of mind, what you think you create. So if you've got these thoughts of anger and get even and going to show them, it's going to cause the feelings of what you feel attract. They're going to, these negative feelings, you're going to attract more into it. And you're going to imagine the adversity and what you imagine you become. The adversity just went from a challenge to a problem to sinking the ship. And because here's number eight in the, in, in the steps of coming, uh, overcoming adversity. Number eight is very simple. Don't quit. Simple step, right? You don't <laughs> quit. That's it. You don't quit. I don't know where we are in time, David. <laughs> are we doing okay? I have no idea. Do I we think have... we're right around the mark, actually. I, I have no good. idea because... No timer. So I'm this a, is an episode I enjoy, and this is one I'd let you run over on anyway. <laughs> yeah, but I'm trying to get us back and organized, Neil. You know, we know that people from Unity are listening to us and everything else, so we're trying to get our, we're trying to get organized again. But this is the way we kind of just so you know, Jim from Unity, if you're listening to the show, uh, this is kind of how we roll. We have fun, and um, we'll get more professional someday. We're like so, water, Jim. We like water. <laughs> <laughs> We're flowing around the rock. So the steps to overcome adversity. One, redefine your adversity. Use higher goal setting. Number two, set each day with priorities of actions. Deal with the adversity situations first thing. Three, do not deal with a problem from the problem energy. Number four, meditate. Five, do not complain. Six, stay connected, head, heart, and hand. Number seven, flow like water. And number eight, do not quit. David, anything? No, I, I love this episode. I, I think it's something that if you can really attach yourself to it, the idea of it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. And if you can really understand that it changes a lot of the stuff that most people would complain about and say, Oh, why this, why that? If it doesn't kill you, then it's just going to let you grow in the, in the future. You know, that's one of those sayings, the ones that says, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. That's one of the truest sayings that they could have. If you can make it through it and go through it, you will get stronger. Your mindset will become. And if it does kill you, you can continue. Uh, I, I lost um, you. I lost and, you a little bit there. We lost you a little bit. Oh, did you, did you chop out yeah. there? Yeah. yeah if it doesn't kill you, <laughs> it makes make you stronger. stronger. Right. And, and if it does just, kill you, you're just fine anyway. Yeah. If you kill, yeah. If you die, then you made it. <laughs> yeah. You're fine. You're fine. You did fine. All right. That's it for today's show. Our mission is to create a shift in the planet, and you can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. These links are right below the show. I think David just fell out of his chair, as you could hear. As always, until next time, stay inspired.